Okey-dokey. Get the mouse out of the way. So how are you doing tonight, Trends? Anything super new with you? I just finished the edit of the... I just finished the edit of the interview, so um, that is now viewable. It's currently unlisted right now because I'm going to plan the release of it probably within the next day or two. Um, but it is finished, so it is valuable to watch. I tried to fix all the audio issues that I had, but surprisingly enough, it still recorded my audio. For some reason, it just wasn't going over the air. Doing some research for uni work and such. Nice! Yeah. Let me see. Problem Battlefield, I'm missing one, which... Oh, that was the wing cap one, so I've got the wing cap, so I can do that now. Uh, Womp's Fortress, Jolly Roger Bay... Well, since I unlocked the, um... Since I unlocked the wing cap, I should be able to do that last one in Bob on Battlefield now. But I still think that there's, um... Maybe the 100 coins, but... It might... Like... I've slept since then, and I've eaten, and I've, like, done a lot of other things, so, like, remembering specifically what I did for Mario 64 is a bit difficult for me. <laughs> but, regardless. Yeah, like, uh, because this week I'm planning on, uh, hooking up my Elgato, and I'm going to be playing some, that, uh, horror game that Cranberry recommended. Also, like working on my audio balancing for Mario 64. Because it's, it's for some reason it's like super loud on my end, so give me just a second. I need to turn my own volume down. <laughs> There we go, like 17. So it is still loud for the stream, but it's not super loud and blowing on my ears on my end. Okay. If I remember right, it's just I have to go through these coins or something. But again, like, it has been a long time since I've actually properly played Mario 64, save for like coming in and just like messing around. That has to be it, because I think I completely forgot to what well, couldn't do this because I didn't have a wing cap. See, even with an Xbox controller, my aim is still terrible. Well, I mean, I guess it wasn't terrible enough for me to get right into the cannon. <laughs> Here, let me try that from this distance. Well, I got not the one I was looking for, but... There we go. Yeah, and I think, like, me streaming Mario 64 is, like, there's a lot of, like, stigma with streaming Mario 64 because, like, there's that expectation that everyone's got to do, like, speedrunning stuff, and... Here we go! It's a very, like, uh... Like, a lot of those things that is expected, like, uh, backwards long jumping and stuff that I can't do. Like, I've gotten over that fear because this game just makes me happy. I enjoy playing it, and... It was my first, like, grand adventure as a child, so it's, like, really great to visit it again, and, like, when I was a kid, I never thought I'd be playing it for an audience, you know? And that's what's really incredible about this experience. So, Jolly Roger Bay, um, I think I needed the metal cap, which is what prevented me from coming through here. But I'm gonna take my time with this. Like, I really love playing Mario 64, so I'm not gonna, like, rush through it. Okay, red coins. Let's 
So there's some on the ship and then some right there. See, like, I'm wondering, like, what kind of propulsion system that cannon uses if it's able to shoot cannonballs and people. Then again, like, Mario is, like, if you compare him, like, in the movies and in Mario Odyssey, he's, like, what, four feet tall or even that? Like, I'm not sure what the cannon height for Mario is. Because, like, even compared to, like, Princess Peach, he's, like, really short, and Luigi's the taller of the two. But yeah, I would say that, like, definitely having a an Xbox controller makes this a lot more of a smooth experience. Because I love the N64 controller. It was the one of the first, like, mainline console controllers that I ever used. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I acknowledge the joysticks on those things were shit. Like, they wore out, like, super easily. Like, I saw a video some a little while back of, um, there's a McDonald's somewhere in, like, I think it was like in Ohio or something, um, that still has their N64 kiosks. Because McDonald's, at least in the United States, um, they used to have like consoles that you could play um, in the Play Place area. Um, so they had the N64, they had the GameCube, like a lot of different McDonald's had those. Um, but this McDonald's just apparently never updated um, its stuff. So they still have N64s that kind of sort of work. However, you wouldn't catch me dead touching those controllers, because that's like 27 years worth of, like, grease and grime that's all over it, so... Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it, but it would be cool to have the kiosk. Because, like, in the video I saw that kiosk had been used so much that, like, uh, the Mickey's, like, Speedway game, like, had literally burned into the screen. But there are also some hotels, too, in America. Like, uh, I don't know how many still do it. But, uh, I think they're Hilton. Or something like that. It might be a Hilton hotel. Well, I guess, I don't know if it would be Hilton, because they're, like, that one's, like, a really high-end brand. Like, um, there's these things called the LodgeNet controllers, where you pay, like, a certain amount of money, and it will let you play N64 games, um, for that amount of time. So, like, if you want to play, like, Mario 64 for an hour, you can pay, like, a little bit, and it goes into your room fee. So, kind of like a room service kind of thing. And there are still some hotels, apparently, that at least uh, uh, in re a few years ago that still had some of those, which is insane. I like barcades more. Oh, kind of like, um... Like, Dave and Buster's and stuff like that, or, like... They're the only ones that I can really think of off the top of my head, because, like... Dave and Buster's, like, is pretty much just adult Chuck E. Cheese. And, like, even as a kid, like, Chuck E. Cheese just was not that amazing to me. <laughs> So, where would that last red coin be? I probably blinded it, but... Oh, there's a thing that down here. Oh. I guess I didn't blind it, it was just at the bottom of this chasm. Yeah, because there's a, there's a Halo game that was released, like, exclusively in arcades called um, Halo Fireteam Raven. And it's actually really fun. It's a gun, it's a light gun game um, that takes place in Halo 1's timeline. It shows you what happens to the crew of the Pillar of Autumn during, uh, or like, an ODST squad during the Halo 1 campaign. It's really cool. Don't know about lo your local brand, but some bars I've gone to have consoles at the tables where you can eat and play what you eat and drink. That's cool. Like, I haven't seen anything like that, at least around where I'm at. Like, it's mostly just, like, um, 
like a Chuck E. Cheese kind of format, or like uh, like it's more of a restaurant, but like a poor pizza place, and then you you eat and then you go play games. So I'm sure this like I think Dave and Buster's kind of fits that um, uh, description though. Sadly, there isn't any nearby, like, mostly just a Chuck E. Cheese, which, you know, I'm 27 years old and I can't just walk into a Chuck E. Cheese by myself. But, like, see, we have an arcade here in town, but the problem is the arcade's not maintained very well, so half the machines don't even work. Like, that, they have a Lost World Jurassic Park game, like, it's a light gun shooter that has been there since I was, like, I think, like, five. <laughs> See, and the thing with, like, uh, drink, like, um, I am an adult, so obviously I can talk about this, but, like, uh, drinking and playing games is just really fun because it just makes everything so much more entertaining. Because, like, you just laugh at everything. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the stream. Starting off with Mario 64, and then I'll play some Kingdom Hearts later. Yeah, you see, it took me forever to get that video edited. Like, I didn't want it to take more than a week, which I guess technically it's a week from when I interviewed him, but... Yeah, it's just like, uh, social anxiety, like, it's just like, I look at the video and I'm like, wow, I actually talked to this person, so it's like... It's like, in the moment, I may have been nervous and fine, like, I was nervous, but, like, I was able to control it, but, like, when I looked back at the footage, it's just like, you know, I'm like, wow, I actually talked to this person. So it's like, reality is setting in, so... Yeah, that's understandable, and, like, don't feel bad about not being able to stream, Sarah. Like... I was gonna, I was gonna stream yesterday, but like I was just so fatigued from work, just because like my back starts to hurt when I'm there for long periods of time. But like after this next week, um, so this week technically, so next week I'm gonna start a new schedule where I'm only doing four-hour shifts, which I can manage that. But like anything more than that, like I get really stressed out and my body starts to just. Hurt. Financially, I'm okay. Like, I don't have to worry about working a lot, like... But at the same time, I just need to... Like, I'm reducing my hours at work just so I can find some time to, like, get better. But I did, um... I am trying out a new meal thing, because, like, a big problem with me is that I always struggle to, like, eat, like, three meals a day, or, like, eat, um... Oh, hi, Tasty! Welcome, welcome! Uh, so, but yeah, like, I tend to struggle to eat, like, the standard three meals a day, and, um, like, actually get, or actually eat, like, properly. So I ordered this, uh, meal plan thing, like, the, a meal box service called Factor, and I just got it today, and I'm gonna try it out. Um, I tried one of the meals earlier, and it was really good quality, um, but, like, I still have many other meals to try, so I'm not sure, like, just yet if I want to. But they're super generous. Like, they gave me, like, this, uh, like, these, uh, vouchers for, like, three free boxes. So, like, I'll be able to, um, get, like, a bunch of, um, a bunch of stuff for free. So it's, like, three weeks worth of meals. And it's literally all you do is you just microwave it. Like, you just, it's, I mean, I get a lot of microwaveable meals anyway. So it's, like, it's... You know, I'm getting, for the same price, I'm getting much better quality and healthier food. And it's not that I don't like to cook, it's just that finding the time to do so and the motivation can be a bit difficult. But so far, I really like what I'm seeing. Like. I mean, I've always known about, like, these, like, meal services that, like, send you meals each week, but I've never actually tried them, and this is kind of, like, my test bed to see. Here we go. Well, no, technically, um, 
I left Kingdom Hearts at um, the uh, Olympus Coliseum. And thank goodness. Thank you for your support, Eno. I don't mind it because I like to know everything's okay. Okay, that's all of Jolly Roger Bay, minus the 100 coins. So, cool, cool mountain. See, it's just a weird feeling, because Mario 64 is the same age as me. Like, it literally came out, like, two months after I was born in the United States, because I think it was, like, a September... No, 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 it was that was Japan. Or, yeah, I don't remember which region it was, but, like, uh... One region where this game came out, like, it was, like, literally, like, a week after I was born. Yes, I am old. Which one is this? Oh, it's the snowman one. Oh, man, I hate this one, because you have to guide it. I need a good head on my shoulders. Sorry, snowman head. We're gonna have to reset. <laughs> I just hit an invisible wall that... Okay. Need your prune juice? Like, even, like... Even when I get older, I don't want to eat prune juice. Or drink cr prune juice. That just sounds disgusting. <laughs> watercress salad and all this other stuff. Well, what if I just jump right here? Oh no, that's not gonna work! Ah! Yeah, because the, the ball has no sense of direction whatsoever. So, I'll just reset the level again. <laughs> maybe I just need to jump down from the start, because maybe that's why it's going so quickly. Yeah, and apparently Captain Hook is really rough in Kingdom Hearts. Like, uh, I watched a video, like, a, somebody that was doing him on, like, Proud Difficulty, and apparently he's, like, super... Um, he's, like, super hard. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I picked the wrong course. <laughs> See, I am easily distracted, Eno. Like, you could tell me a story and I'd completely forget what I'm doing on screen. Luckily, I can just do that and reset it easily enough. Like, for all Mario 64's faults, it definitely has a lot of features that make it easier. Hook was actually the boss that made me take a week's long break when I played it on proud mode. Oh, I don't blame you, like... That, like, uh, that rapid sword slash thing that he does? Ah, I fucked it up again! When will I learn? Probably never, but, you know, at least I can just reset if I fuck up. So I'll give it a few good more tries. But yeah, I think the first thing I'll do when I start it is I'm probably going to um, do the Hercules Cup again. You know, the next, na next mainline game has a weird gimmick, and that makes Hook have an e even weirder gimmick. See, chat, like, uh, for those who were watching the Kingdom Hearts streams, which boss do you think gave me the most trouble? Like, Ursula, like, gave me a lot of trouble, but, like, uh, which boss do you think gave me the most trouble so far? It was worth the hit, because I got the snowman. 
Now give me the star. Perfect! What a great new body! See, like, the fact that this, the body piece was, like, sentient, was like, hey, I need a good head on my shoulders. It kind of reminds me of that old cartoon, Evil Con Carne, on Cartoon Network, where, like, the bear had, like, the brain and also the stomach of a person the, that became Grim Adventures Billy and Mandy. The thigh wind. Riku? Yeah, definitely Riku. That's because he's a cheating bastard! <laughs> Wall kicks will work. Okay, that's literal. that's, like, to the point, I guess, but... You see, like, the- like, most of the friends on Destiny Island are relatively easy and to the point, but then you got Riku, who's just, like, teaching you, like, all these mechanics that are a lot- like, he doesn't- he doesn't mess around, because he teaches you all these mechanics that you need to learn, so it's like you're learning by failure. But I just happen to fail so many different times. Okay, I'm gonna have to go over there. Oh, hi, Wombat! Good to see you! How have you been? Um, so... Kit was telling me that you were interested in seeing my interviews. Um, I just completed the edit for my um, interview with Jeff Steitzer, the voice of Halo's multiplayer. Um, the VODs still exist on my Twitch, but like there's some audio issues related to it, so um, if you want me to send that video to you, um, I can post the link. Yeah, I'll actually do that real quick, that way anyone else who's interested can see it, because I'm actually really proud of, um, just being able to do that, so. There you go. That is the video. Actually, yeah, that is. I just want to make sure I didn't send you something random, like maybe the, my, my music playlist or something. Okay. Back to it. So if I remember right, I have to get um, the pink bob to unlock the cannon when I shoot my way over there. That is a spiffy heckin' intro. Well, thank you. That was um, made by uh, Taylor, also known as Frozen Solid, one of um, Kit and I's crew. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for it. Like, he spent a lot of time on it, and I'm really proud of Taylor for that, because I'm not really, the, like, I'm better with, like, uh, working with material that already exists as a graphic designer. I like to take stuff that's already been created and make something new. I'm not really great at creating stuff from scratch. So, like, I, I like working with existing assets. How in the world did I miss that? Okay, we are taking a break from Cool Cool Mountain for now. <laughs> pre pre Y two K platformers were ruthless. Oh yeah, especially because like the framing, like it's just so weird sometimes. Yeah, and that's why I like to work with templates and stuff. Like it's just I'm never really good at like I've never really been like a, good at creating like like stuff on my own. Oh, so I'm gonna go from one hell to another because upstairs is where Tall Tall Mountain is. So you know what? For stream, the first room I'm gonna go into is Tall Tall Mountain. Oh dear. So the story behind this level is um, when I was a kid, uh, I got stuck on this level for the longest time because I didn't know that long jumping was a thing, so I just always kept doing the triple jump. Because this level, like, if you didn't know how to long jump, like, it forces it into your arsenal, because it's just every jump you need to do the long jump, or at the very least do a triple jump and then a, um, the slide. 
Here's challenge, make a precise jump with a wonky camera, no safeties around any platform. No kidding. And there are people who are able to do, like, such crazy stuff with Mario 64. I am not one of those spirits. Um, even though I am using an Xbox controller, so I have a much better advantage than most, um, it takes a lot of skill to master a game, and Mario 64, even though I've played it since I was a little kid, um, I am definitely by no means a master of anything related to this game. I can play it, and I can beat it, that's about it. So, this is the part that got me stuck a lot when I was a kid. Because, like, I would just, I would never be able to make this jump. So I just would always fall right back down. So it's it's great to be able to, like, share these stories, because I'm sure, like, those of us who have played Mario 64 all have, like, a story about it that, like, where, where we got stuck on something. Uh, I have the Xbox Series X controller. How is it? It's really good. Um, it feels a little weird because I grew up, like, well, I grew up with, uh, the Duke, um, the original Xbox controller. But, um, like, and I mostly played with the 360 controller, um, throughout my other streams. But I like it a lot. It's, uh, it's Bluetooth, so I don't have to worry about it disconnecting every five seconds like the, um, the stupid, um, 360 controller did. But I can do- it's, I can be a lot more precise with my movements, because the N64 joystick was just junk. I love it, but I hate it. It's a complex love-hate relationship. If you know the words, you can join in to put your hands together. I saw somebody remix that, but to One Wing and Angel from Final Fantasy VII, so like, it's a- uh, instead of it being Sephiroth's theme, it's D K D K. D. K. Well, see, I've seen some people make some quality of life changes to um, Donkey Kong 64. They added um, the ability to switch characters on the fly so you don't have to go all the way back to switch to, like, Diddy or whatever. But Rare, they made some really good, like, collectathon games back in the day. There was literally not a. S what, what? What kind of. What? There was no wall there! What was I hitting? And, um, speaking of rare games, um, Estelle Ellis, um, she said that a Tuesday would be good. Like, I don't know if she meant this Tuesday, as in tomorrow, or next Tuesday. Um, the voice of Crystal from Star Fox Adventures. Um,. She said to email her, but she hasn't responded to my email yet, so if, um, tomorrow comes and, um, I haven't gotten a hold of her, um, I'll just poke her on Twitter and be like, Hey, uh, do you want to do it next week? Uh, plus she's also in, a uh, UK time, so, um, I also have to work around that, which, uh, her time would be, like, 2 o'clock, so, like, roughly I'd probably have to start a stream at, like, 2 o'clock or something like that. Which is fine, I mean, that's early, little, oh, we're a bit earlier than I usually stream, but um, I think that's a good opportunity for more people to turn out to that. Yeah, like I told you, like that, like what? I don't even know what happened there. Like, it just like an invisible wall just like deflected me from getting under the log. Just my seating arrangements. Okay, there we go. So let's try this again. You swallowed a pill, weird. Oh, that sucks. Do you have any? Do you have any water or anything? Like, I think that's the worst feeling. Well, one of the worst feelings is whenever you like take a pill and it gets like stuck in your throat a little bit. Monkey could never stand against a human, Jojo! Yeah. 
me out like that. Sure, I'll free you. But honestly, what guarantee do I have that he's gonna help me? Like, when I let him go, he can just go free, and he can just run from me. Like, I guess this is just an honor system of the monkeys in Mario 64. Why are you trying to punch a monkey? Not so much punching a monkey, but grabbing a monkey. Problem is, where did it land? Oh, right here. That time you definitely tried to kick him. Yeah, but then again, the monkeys in this level are dicks. They, they steal your hat. And if you don't get your hat back, you can leave the level and um, you won't. You, you have to go back into Tall Tall Mountain to get your hat back. Estrogen pills are taking the worst. I'm pretty sure it's the worst tasting pill I've ever ta I've had to. Ugh. I think uh, just uh, the worst pill that I've ever taken was um uh, uh like I used to take like when I was a teenager I took pills for like acne and stuff and like break and like breakouts to like help with um like uh my face and that was probably the worst spelling pill I've ever taken. Like, now it's all just, like, generic stuff. Like, it all just, like, looks and smells the same. But, like, I think the worst one I ever had was, like, when I took stuff for my, um, my acne. Imagine mint gum. No, imagine no sweetener of any kind. Now imagine the taste of radioactivity from Chernobyl. That's the pill I take twice a day. Yeah, I take, um... Well, that and, like, technically it's not a pill, but fish oil is pretty gross tasting. Because, you know, obviously it's fish oil, so it's not gonna taste great, but, like, um, that's another thing that just tasted and smelled absolutely terrible. I made the same mistake I made when I was a kid. What was I thinking? I literally- I thought that I could make it, but I didn't. <laughs> Ah, it's the monkey! No, get away! You're not stealing my hat! Oh no, oh no! Wrong way! I'm stuck in a loop! No, Mario! I already hate mint. I don't mind mint. Like, when I was a teenager, I would, like, mint, like, five gum. But I think, like, those of us who went to public school, at least in the States, um, that's me falling into death. Um, I don't know if this is a culture thing, like, around the world, but, like, uh, when I was in middle school, I remember, like, you had a pack of gum, like, everybody was your best friend. They're like, oh, can I have a piece of gum? Give me some gum. I almost threw up once. <gasps> Through my pillow got stuck in my throat and the radioactive mint flavor started to leak. Ugh. How it feels to chew five gum. Mario falling. Stimulate your senses. I remember when uh, I was in the seventh grade, there was a there was a girl in my class who brought um, nicotine gum to school. Because, like, I think they had been a smoker, so they were trying to get off of, um... They are trying to get off of, like, uh... Cigarettes and going to gum. And... I've had a few friends who have tried that, like, nicotine gum to, like, get off of, uh... Smoking, and they said it tastes... Like shit. But, like, uh... She was just offering this to kids in class, but the thing was is that this gum had nicotine in it, so it was an... It was still the... It had the addictive substance. So like it was trying like you were trying she was trying to get off of like cigarettes into the gum. So it's like you're trading one thing for another. But I remember like she got suspended from school for doing that. 
never I never saw the original ad for that, and the only thing I associated with it is the dang memes. Well, honestly, like that's the best way to experience Five Gum is to stimulate your senses with memes. Yeah, honestly, like I was big on Orbit Scum for a while, but like Five Gum, I just like a lot better. Like when I went on uh. When I went on my trip to see Tasty last year, um, I got this huge pack of gum. I think it, I think it was five, but like it really helped on the plane ride. Like that's that was something that was recommended to me. Is like if you're bad with planes, like just chew gum because it keeps like your like keeps like your inner ear or something like um, stimulated or something, so you don't feel like the pressure and like the the um, the dizziness from being on a plane. I think the worst mistake I made was not eating really at all before I got on the plane, so I nearly passed out. I don't know, like, uh, for those in chat, the chewing motion moves the muscles involved in the inner ear. <laughs> No. Yeah, the biggest things that helped me is, like, I, try I like, downloaded, like, a bunch of stuff on my iPad. Like, I had... I was prepared for a long ride. I, I downloaded Knights of the Old Republic. I downloaded, like, um, a bunch of stuff on my Disney+. Plus. Like, I, I downloaded the entirety of The Bad Batch and The Book of Boba Fett. But I just could not watch anything. Um while I was on the plane, so, like, I just, like, took out my noise-canceling headphones and just listened to podcasts the whole time. And that was what got me through my plane ride, because I couldn't even look at the map of the plane, like, where we were, like, geographically. I like planes. Easy peasy. So something that, like, when I was a kid, I had no idea this level even existed. So, like, um, as an adult when I'm playing it, it's just, uh... It's like, oh, that's there. It's nice, my flight to my parents. Only times two and a half to three hours instead of 16 hours by car. Yeah, like, it really takes... Like, I don't like driving super long distances. So, like, planes really help. But, like, I think it's just, like, I need to expose myself to it a bit more. Um, just because when I went and... Because when I went to see Tasty back in August of last year, um, I had not been on a plane since, like, 2003. So, like, I was really little whenever I was on a plane last. Cause like as a kid you just don't care. It's like, oh I'm on a plane, I'm in the air, like, oh what is this? You know, like but like as an adult, like I just like I'm so hyper focused on everything that's really hard to kind of get over that. The security plane is worth is worse than the plane itself. Yeah, security is probably the worst. Like because if anything, they're inconsistent. So like um Chicago O'Hare Fantastic airport. I love Chicago O'Hare. It's like a fucking shopping mall. However, Dulles is a piece of shit. Um, like, I did not have a good time at Dulles. It, with the exception of um, what was cool there is they have a metro system, so I got to like ride the subway in the metro, which was cool. But at the same time, like, it, they just their airport is just shit. Like, getting in and out of it is terrible. Um, and just overall, like the TSA there, we're just like we're much more rude than at Chicago. Because like uh, they they would give me inconsistent rules. They'd say like, oh, you've got to take out like your iPad and other electronics out of your bag and then put them separately through the X-ray thing. So I did. And then the second time I went there, they're like, oh, you can leave your iPad in there. So they were inconsistent at best. 
You have to see the main Mexico airport. It's huge. It has its own sky ramp, sky tram thing. Here we go. I'm biased because I get checks every time I go through. I'm really sorry to hear that, Sarah. Like, the TSA can be the worst. I'm not saying that all employees like that are, like, of the TSA are terrible because, you know, some people are just there for the job, but, you know, I definitely can, like, that sucks. Well, see, like, Trends, my local airport is more, it's a regional one, so, like, but we, um, but United Airlines comes through here. Um, so. But before that, like, the only way to get, like, anywhere else is that you'd have to take the airport to go to another airport in order to get to, um, like, an international one. So, like, they didn't even have jets for the longest time. Like, they just kept, they kept using prop planes. Dulles Airport is a lot nicer when it's not raining five might get... You see, that that was the thing. Like, uh, I had to stay an extra day because, uh, like, nature decided it was monsoon season. So, like, uh, it just rained bloody murder uh, right as I was supposed to get on my plane. And it was delayed, like, for another day, basically. So I would have missed my connecting flight. But, like, uh, yeah, it was hell. Um, I've been like in some terrible storms before, but that was the worst rain I have ever been in. Like it, like the the worst rain that we get around here. Like yeah, I can run through it just fine and not get soaked. But like I was soaked within a few seconds of being out in that rain. It was like literally all of the all of the moisture in the cloud just came down all at once. It was bad. Ah, N64 camera. No, Mario! I have not seen a rain that bad since it happened. My parents live next to Dulles Airport. I hate the airport, so I always book my flight to Reagan instead. Yeah, like I said, um, Chicago O'Hare, fantastic airport. Would I would just go there just to go there because of how awesome it is. Like, if I was able, but... Um, but yeah, like, uh, my regional airport, it's like, meh, it's an airport, a regional airport, it's nothing special. But next time I'm in Chicago, I definitely need to get some souvenirs, because when I was there, like, I wanted to get a snow globe, but the problem was is that the stores had all closed by the time I had gotten my flight in, because I had gotten to Chicago at, like, like, my flight didn't leave until, like, 9 o'clock at night or something, or, like... Never been to Reagan, but I wouldn't be surprised. That's nicer. Yeah, Dulles is, like... It's, like, it's cool, but it's just, like, you, I expect better from an airport that's in D.C. You know, if you ever visit them, a five-minute walk from the airport. Oh, where you live currently? Because if so, then sure. But, you know, we live so close by that, like, um, I may as well just drive. Yeah, you're literally just, like, a state away. Because if it's, like, uh, if it's, like, a state away, that's one thing, but, like, if it's, um... But if it's, like, multiple, that'll take me, like, 11 hours or something. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm just gonna say screw it, I'm just gonna do it this way. Ah, uh, that's why they call it shocking arrow lifts. Yeah, I'm about, like, roughly four, four and a half hours away, so I'm not, like, super far. But it would just be hard to justify, um, getting a, like, paying a plane ticket. See, and that's the thing, I love Wet Dry World, but... Apparently I suck at it, but, you know, I suck at a lot of things. 
For a spirit that doesn't have a mouth, I do a lot of sucking. I'm gonna go back down to the basement. Oh yeah, Big Boo's Haunt. I completely forgot that was unlocked. I'm not commenting anything new to say. I suck a lot of things. At a, I said I suck at a lot of things. I don't say that I suck a lot of things. And the best part was, I did it on purpose, because I know that you'll take what I say out of context, chat. <laughs> See, that's the reaction I wanted, like, because, like, if I say something so, like, obviously sexual, like, I know that you're gonna take it out of context, so, like, I, I did that on purpose, because I knew that you would have that reaction. That's the beautiful thing. <laughs> that's the thing, that's the beauty though. It's like, I don't hide my sexuality. Like I'm actually very proud of who I am. You won't stoop down to my perverted level. Do I have to even mention some of the things that we've talked about? Like, here, let me put my controller down. Do we literally have to talk about some of the things that we've talked about, Sarah? Because we can do that. <laughs> it's like, you're, call you're saying I'm the perverted one? Okay. <laughs> now you're just spamming hearts at me, okay? See, it'd be funny if you got like if you got like timed out for that when you're my mod. <laughs> okay, which one was this? Big Boo's Merry Go Round. I'm actually gonna skip that one. I'm gonna go straight to the roof. Just because for years, like another one of these levels that I got really stuck that I got stuck on as a kid was this one. Because I just never knew how you were supposed to get up to the roof, so I would always see King Boo. But I wouldn't know that you had to jump off of this, and then... I think it's a jump and then a wall kick. Video where it didn't happen. It sounds like you're deflecting a little bit there, Sarah. Are you a little insecure about some stuff? But hey, I mean, like... You're an adult, I'm an adult, like... I don't... I... Honestly, like, if it's in good taste, I don't mind not safe for work stuff. Just as long as it's in, as it's in good taste. Yeah, that's a childhood fulfillment right there. Like, I mean, I did get it when I played this game a few years back, but like for years I never knew how to get up to the roof. So that's some childhood fulfillment that is caught on stream. But, um, you know, has to suffer through it. Well, I suffer through pretty much every game that I play, like even ones that I'm good at, like ones that I, like, like that DMC3 stream was so bad, like I just want to forget that it existed. I'm, like I'm gonna stream more Devil May Cry, but like that one was just awful because it, it wasn't even not necessarily my fault on that one because the controls for the PC, like the keyboard was terrible. Like it was, they were trying to emulate like a uh, controller setup on the keyboard and it just didn't work. 
Um, which is partially the reason why I got this controller, because I just was not wanting to deal with, um, that BS. Because <laughs> it would disconnect, like, every two seconds, so, like, with Bluetooth, I don't have to worry about that. Because I don't have to rely on the physical cord. And so far, it seems to be serving me pretty well. What does Pityos Ruins and Stream mean specifically? So that is, um, if you redeem that, I, it's a one-time redeem. I will have to suffer through the hardest dungeon in Final Fantasy XV. Um, one that I purposely did not do because I hate it and I don't want to do it, but I, if somebody redeems it, I will do it in a future stream. So if you want to see me suffer, that's the suffering. Well, hey, I mean, that's a different kind of suffering, though. Like, the hot sauce is one thing, but, like, the Tios Ruins? Good gosh. It's like a Metroid Mania, but in a Final Fantasy dungeon. It's, it's bad. Now, that doesn't necessarily sound bad at first glance, but, like, it'll change your camera angle to a, um like a side-scroller at one point, and it's just not built for that, so it's just bad. Um, but another thing, uh, um, uh, the hot sauce redeem, I'm keeping that as, like, a one-time thing, so, like, whoever redeems it, like, will be the last person to redeem the hot sauce. Um, because that's kind of like a leftover from when I first started, and I know that people found enjoyment of it, but, like, I just realized, like, now it's probably not the best idea for me to do that, like, consistently, just because of how, like, rough the peppers are. But, um, whoever redeems it, like, I'll honor it, just because I know some people have been saving up points, so it'll be the last hot sauce redeem that I'll do. Yeah, because I'm going to replace it with Bean Boozled, so, like, um, I'll have, like, some every flavor beans, and then, uh, it, it's not the same, necessarily, but it's close enough, because, like, I could, like, for example, I couldn't even stomach the vomit flavor one, like, I immediately had to get, like, spit it out. It was that terrible. Yeah, because it's still causing me pain, but, like, flavor flavorful pain. Like, it's not causing me, like, physical, like, oh my gosh, is my gut going to explode kind of pain. Not that that does that, but I wanted to over-dramatize it. Oh yeah, I forgot the, um, Goombas drop points, too. Give me your, give me your coin, you pinata. I guess you're not a loathsome stink bug enjoyer. Yeah, what does that even mean? <laughs> You don't want to hurt my mouth, okay. What mouth? I think we've already been over this. Oh, there's a stink- there's a stink bug flavor? If there is, ugh. I mean, I'll suffer through it, but at the same time, like, I'll just- I think the best way for me to do it is just, like, one bean. Like, so maybe you'll get lucky, and maybe I'll- I'll actually make it cheaper. Like, I'm not gonna make, like, I'm not gonna, like, have it, like, at 35k or whatever points just for one bean, so I'll make it, like, I don't know, like, uh, maybe, like, 2,000 points or something. 
it's like a reasonable price, that way it happens often. But I also have to have them physically too, like I actually have to physically have the beans, so like, uh, then I'll start like, uh, I'll start being in debt to, uh, chat, um, for however many beans I wasn't able to provide. <laughs> It's a reference to Joel from Mind Sauce. He did Bean Boozled for some reason. Really loved the gross flavors, especially Stink Pug. Well, see, like, uh... I, the weirdest flavor that I enjoyed was the soap flavor. And I don't know why. Like, the soap flavor just tasted fine. Grass flavor was ill. No. Still better flavor than stink bug. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. Um But hey, I think that's a better reaction than um hot sauce, because like it'll be a different reaction every time rather than me just like coughing up my lungs. Yeah, apparently plumbing, like, makes somebody, like, really athletic. But see, like, I've never seen Mario actually fix anything plumbing-related. <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen the Mario movie, so, I mean, like, I know that he has, like, that business with Luigi or whatever, but, like... No! No school bullies. See, I'm only at 49 coins, so I'm kind of concerned. Would you rather drink hot sauce or do the Pios Ruins? Um, I would rather drink hot sauce. It is, it is, it's that bad. I don't. No, you motherfucker! <laughs> oh! Ah, no. Uh. no, no, you don't get to head pat me after that. <laughs> oh no. Well, I guess that's something that I'll be doing this week, I guess. <laughs> no, but because you have no idea what I'm gonna have to suffer through. <laughs> it's okay though. Know, like you can head pat me or throw things at me, I don't care. Well at least I can remove that redeem now that it's been redeemed. Problem is I get I gotta remember where that dungeon even is. Cause I know you have to have the flying regalia to get to it. Which I do have it on my main file, so... I know, I know. <laughs> it was shark -eyed. No, 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 no! No! Oh! Oh, that could have ended badly. I would have been so mad. Headpats and then suffering. Okay, so I guess it wasn't a hundred coins? Well, I guess maybe it's every coin on the map or something, I don't know. Oh, that would have sucked if I died. <laughs> I gotta play it safe, I gotta stop being reckless. One, two, three! Here we go. Hey, I said you can head pat me. I literally just said, like, hey, if you want to head pat me, you can. I may as well do Bowser again. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not too worried about that right now. Like, I... I get so distracted that, like, I completely forget what I'm doing. Alright guys, chill out on the teasing, please. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna exit the course because I've already got the star. Still gotta get the one in here, too. I'm good not to get Nettle. I'm getting not to get Oblin. I'm a gnome! Can you been known? exact locations of the coins here, but if I need to go back, I can go back. Yeah, like, he was, like, he was almost doing, like, super sonic speed. being able to see a damn thing. any over here, but it's a good view. Okay, there's one over there, and then there's one right there, and there's one over there. Yeah. Fuck! It's like I try it once and then I just like in shame just go away. I think I'll try like uh, one or two more levels and then I'll switch to King of Hearts. here. Or not the coins, but the red coins. That was actually better than me just doing it the way I was supposed to. 
like, I got enough height from that that I just went all the way up. May as well have just done that from the start, because it was probably easier. So I actually did um, a little bit of self-help stuff today. Like, I, I have not been to my martial arts class in a long time, just because it's been hard to get out of my room. At, because, like, most of the time I would just, like, you know, I'd go to work, come home, uh, go to work, come home. It was just the same routine because I didn't ever have time to really do anything else. So um, I actually spent the time and I went to class today and it was really fulfilling. Like I, um, I remembered a lot more than I thought I did. So like I'm not completely lost with uh, martial arts. Like uh, I never gave up, but... Like, I just, you know, when you're kind of, like, locked into, like, this mindset, like, this darkness for the longest time, um, and then you actually, like, find the strength to get out of it, like, it's really fulfilling to actually do the things you love again. Did I miss the- and he hit the wall as he was coming up? Okay. The only thing that I just, like... You know, it's something that I'm working through because it's like, you know, nothing great comes easy. But, like, damn, do I hate fucking nunchucks. Like, I'm, that's one of the, like, katas that I'm learning is a nunchuck kata, and I just, I fucking hate it. Like, I respect it, but at the same time, I just hate doing it because it's just, like, it's one that I, it's just really hard for me to memorize just because of how my brain works. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not dissing anybody who loves the chucks, but I, I fucking hate doing it. It's, it's just like, uh, just chuck them out the window. Let's well, see, like, uh, my, uh, teacher, he, uh, somebody, like, brought some homemade chucks one time that were made out of, like, wood because he was a woodworker or something. And, uh, oh, sorry, I already got that. That was the star. Okay. Yeah, that shows you how much I pay attention sometimes, but like it is hard to like concentrate on the game and then also talk. But yeah, like uh, nunchucks, like they're fun, but like I'm just not really a big fan of them. Like I'm more of like a sword and like like I'm, I'm more of a blade spirit. Like I, I like to like work with blades and stuff a little more. But my, my uh, sensei says that um, he's going to throw tennis balls at me one day, and I'm going to have to deflect them with the nunchuck, so I have to get good or get plastered with tennis balls. So it's either I get good or I get hit in the face with a tennis ball. Either way, um, I have no choice. The Bruce Lee training. Yeah, it's like... It's either I, it's either I learn or I get hit, you know? It's like, learn by failure and pain. Like that. And that. Well, better start practicing. You can start now if you want. Oh, f- <laughs> 
He should have told me to duck. I literally did that the first hit. Yeah, I still don't know why, um, the prices are so weird, because, um, like, I made it a thousand points for the ducks, but for some reason it, like, changed it to 999. Like, even, I guess even my freaking, um, my channel points are adjusting for inflation. Deflect the ducks. Maybe I should play duck game on stream. Because I think... I think that would be something that chat would love for me to play. slime. It becomes a part of my essence whenever you hit me with it. That's why my dress is green. Because not be it was originally white. But I got slimed so much that it turned my dress green. That's, some, that's also uh, another thing. One, another person that I'm going to try to get a hold of for an interview is Dave Iser. Um, he was the host of Nickelodeon Slime Time Live back in the early 2000s. Uh, so I'm going to try to get a hold of him. Can't confirm anything yet because I have not contacted him yet, but um, he's somebody that I'm going to try to get a hold of. Because, like, one of the big things that I want to do with the stream is, uh, or the interviews, is, like, get a hold of people that were really important to my childhood. Maybe not necessarily important in, like, the suit with the grand scheme of things, but, like, uh, people that meant a lot to me and their performances that meant a lot to me. So, like, Matt Hill and, um, so on. Yeah, see, that's something that I want to ask him, too, is, like, yeah, did David Lynch actually appear on Slime Time Live? Because the problem is that Slime Time Live is lost media. Like, I would say, like, 80, like 90% of their episodes are missing because they were never archived properly. So all that you can really watch is what's available on YouTube or the Internet Archive. And I think that's the biggest shame, is, like, when lost media becomes a thing. Because, like... There's also just companies that just, like, don't care. So, like, uh... They don't care that something could be lost media. Like, they just care about, like, protecting their copyright. And I'm dead. Like, there was a, there's a lawsuit, from my understanding, like, uh, up to the Internet Archive. I don't know what happened with that, but, like, uh, because, like, they were, like, lending out, like, PDFs of books or something. Like, stuff that wasn't even in print anymore. But the publishing companies, like, had, like, a big problem with that. And I've said it before on stream, I definitely advocate for a change in the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Because I really feel that it's outdated, because it was it was written um, at a time when the internet was still in its infancy, um, and the landscape has really changed from 1998. But pessimistically speaking, it like I don't think it'll ever change, just because like companies profit off of abusing that law. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to Kingdom Hearts. Um, so give me just a few minutes to set that up, chat, and I will see you in a moment. 